Well, it's a huge privilege today to um, introduce you to a new friend of mine, uh, Cindy Helton, uh, all the way from America. Cindy, whereabouts are you in America? I'm in Tennessee. Wonderful. So, I'm in Tennessee, right outside of Nashville. Great. How far is that from Nashville? 10 miles. We're wow, so cool. I can sort of hear the music already. <laughs> uh -huh. It's quiet right now. Everything's shut down. <laughs> oh, well, we'll come on to that. So Cindy's a new friend of mine, and I'll just quickly bring people up to speed on the sort of the journey of how this little interview has come about. And then, and then I'll introduce you to Cindy and we'll open this up. But um, uh, with all coronavirus kicking off, and me as a, a vicar here, as a pastor here, um, was feeling a little bit of anxiety about how to navigate this with my family and with our church. And one of the ladies in our, in our congregation who's on our church council, um, she had led our staff on a thing called Adventure Time with Jesus. And she had led us on a guided reflection of trying to hear God, hear the Holy Spirit speak to us, hear Jesus speak to us. And I'd been a little bit skeptical initially, um, but she took us through about 10 minutes and God really spoke to me through it uh, in very, um, in ways that were only God. And so I was like, oh, wow, that's really cool. And then we went further through Corona and she produced one with her two daughters and she put it on our YouTube channel. And one morning during my quiet time, I thought, wow, I want to go on that adventure time with Jesus again. So I pressed play on my phone with this video and followed her and her two daughters on this adventure time with Jesus. And God really spoke to me again. And I did it the following morning. And then I thought, wow, this is so cool that we can, I'm, I'm not a naturally contemplative person, but through these little meditations, it was so helpful. So I put in my podcast search finder, Adventure Time with Jesus, and it didn't come up, like, up with anything. So then I thought, oh, maybe Christian meditation, Christian reflection. And it came up with Cindy's podcast called The Daily Still. And Cindy's going to tell us a little bit about that in, 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 a, in a minute. But I've now been working through that, literally through the last, whatever it is, five, six weeks or so, doing this every single morning as part of my daily quiet time, as well as journaling and reading the scriptures and praying that, that I do. And um, Cindy will explain a little bit more about what it is in a minute, but she's done two seasons. I've worked my way through the second season. I'm now doing the first season. And she did a lovely little selection of meditations through Holy Week, which I've done as well. And the format is just five to 10 minutes of meditation, little verse of scripture and some instrumental music. And I think, Cindy, you'll put me right. I think there's been 100,000 downloads already now of this or something. <laughs> Yes, as, as of a couple of weeks ago, yes. And I also noticed it was in the top 20 Christian podcasts in Canada, Switzerland, New Zealand, Bahamas, Singapore, number two in the United Arab, Arab Emirates and Ireland, and number one in Benin. Go Benin. Yeah. <laughs> and um, some of the reviews, which I would attest in my own life, about people finding uh, calmness and serenity, uh, even people's relationships being restored, not just with God, but with family members through um, connecting with God through these meditations that you're um, producing. So, Cindy, welcome and thank you. And um, it's great to have you with us. As we get going, I'm going to hand over to you. Can you tell us a little bit about your family background and your faith background? And then we'll head into telling us a little bit about the Daily Still and what it's all about. Sure. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to do this, and it's really a pleasure to meet you and to be able to share this with your, your church and your congregation. Um, so I'll, um, I'll actually start just a little bit about me. I've been, um, my husband and I celebrated our 40th wedding anniversary this last year. Um, I have two grown kids who are married, a wonderful son and daughter-in-law, and three sweet little granddaughters. And um, I live, as I said, right outside of Nashville, Tennessee, but I was born and raised in California, Southern California on the beach areas. And, um, and so I'm here in Tennessee, it's beautiful, but I'm kind of missing that. I grew up in a Christian home, a Presbyterian church, and um, I was baptized at 12 and became a member of the church. But once I was out of high school and did seeking on my own, I became part of the Calvary Chapel uh, movement. Started in California, if you're familiar with that, with Chuck Smith, and became more familiar with the power and activity of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So I think that was a, a real growth point for me um, in going outside of what was a practice in my home of going to church. And, and I don't have anything negative. I'm so grateful for that 
but I think exploring it on my own and um, discovering what was comfortable for me launched me into a whole nother um, place of desire and longing. And as I got married and raised little kids, you get busy and kind of off track. And my um, husband and I went to another Calvary Chapel, Harvest, uh, with Greg Laurie. So yes. we've had the privilege of going to some really awesome churches and, and being trained up. I became a Bible study leader, a coach and mentor um, at the church that we attended where we raised our kids. And so I've just done that through the years. That's a little bit, yeah, a little so bit good. about uh, my background. And Cindy, before we go and talk about the daily still, when you say, because some of the people watching this, you know, th th there'll be some people who, who would be uh, very new to faith or even investigating faith. So when you talk about sort of having the experiences with the Holy Spirit, what might that have looked like practically for you at that, at that time? And, and even now, in a sense, you know, what, what was that like for you? Yeah, what did that mean? So I think initially um, it was experiences of prayer, of just experiencing, giving those spaces, even, even back then, spaces to um, engage with the Holy Spirit, be um, listening for, for those, those whispers of God, allowing the, um, the supernatural power of God to be manifested in ways that you, it's hard to explain, but, but you just know that it's something outside of yourself. Um, and, would this, I, and, and would this have sort of happened during church services or in your small group or just through daily life or yeah how how would that have been or, or or all of the above i think all of the above attending um calvary chapels i i experienced it within the church service itself as i um as i grew older and matured those experiences of experiencing the holy spirit um in more profound ways came through as we'll share the practice of, um, of stillness. And that, that took a long time for me to get to that place of understanding the spiritual disciplines of silence and solitude and contemplative prayer. Um, that opened a whole new area of just receiving and being in the presence of the Holy Spirit and understanding that um, in a far greater way. So good. Well, go on then and tell, it, tell, it, tell us about the Daily Still and how that came about, because I think there's sort of an interesting story to that. Yeah, so the, um, I actually began um, the practice of Christian meditation and um, uh, guided Christian meditation through a friend. It was a time in my life where there was a lot of different life um, circumstances that had happened. Um, it had caused a lot of anxiety and fear. Um, Can you share so a bit about those? Um, the well um back in 2005 i had um, my sister had been suffering from parkinson's disease and she um she passed away and in that same week five days later my dad went to heaven and joined her um and right after that my mom was diagnosed with alzheimer's disease and so you kind of just go through those things and you grieve and you think that you dealt with that and life goes on, but there was a lot of underlying anxiety and things that I hadn't really um, fully dealt with that started manifesting. And I started having some heart issues and racing heart and panic attacks. And, and those had actually, to go back, the first time I ever experienced an anxiety attack was back in my 30s after I was diagnosed with um, thyroid cancer. And again, I, I'm, I'm more introverted and I hold things in and so trying to just go on with life and function I've now learned there's a lot of things that I held in that manifested in ways that weren't healthy. And so at this particular time, um, I was starting to just have it, my heart was racing and um, I, I was put on medication that didn't help. It actually lowered my blood pressure too much, but long story short, um, it was an electrical misfiring of my heart that was caused through stress and anxiety. And at that time I had a friend who that you have to listen to this anointed CD. And it was a soaking CD that that whole thing was coming, um, becoming very popular. And the very first time I sat down and just listened to free, very freestyle worship, kind of a combination of music and prayer just being spoken over you, um, unexpected, not something that you would sing along or participate with. I was changed within that one hour. 
And I knew I wanted more of that. And so this particular friend did guided Christian meditations and um, I invited her to my house to do that. And that kind of launched into me um, opening my home and I started hosting gatherings for other women because I wanted them to know what I had, ex had experienced. And I wasn't finding a place within the church or anywhere else for that matter that really was offering that type of um, contemplative prayer gatherings. Wow. So that was the beginning of um, just an understanding of that. Practice that through many years. A lot of times, two or three people, you'll find, I think that circumstances today are changing this, but you'll find that the, I'm sure as a pastor, the prayer gatherings and contemplative gatherings are the least attended. And so the church wasn't necessarily, I would host one or two things there, but it was not really the popular gatherings. And so I just kind of plugged away at home and just continued doing that. And um, fast forward to the podcast and how that started is in 2015, my daughter uh, was pregnant with her first child and she wanted some birthing affirmations and she couldn't find anything online and asked me to record them, to record some for her and scriptures and things that she could play during the birthing process. Um, so we did that and at that same time, after that was done, it was so beneficial. We started talking about we maybe need to offer this to other people, um, put it out there, and we talked about it. And four years later, we it hadn't really gone beyond her using it and sharing it with some friends. But last year, uh, randomly, I had someone ask me to join a podcast training class, and so it all began from there. So it's kind of it's exciting to me that the podcast itself was birthed from my daughter giving birth, but God's always birthing new things in us and in our lives. Her husband's um, a musician. He did all, he does all the music and the, um, the scoring. He's, that's kind of the type of thing he does. So it's a um, little family ministry here, but that's so how, it, how it launched. Never on my radar, never on my radar. I, like I said, I'm an introvert and um, doing something publicly was very much out of my comfort zone. So good, Cindy. That's amazing. And then going on, for, and, and now it's now it's obviously, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, I think you had said there's something like 100,000 downloads now, which is just an amazing thought that that amount of people are tuning into God in that way. And I think particularly at this time, it's just interesting the timing of the whole thing that we are mm -hmm. spending, a lot of people are spending a lot of time at home now. And I think one of the things to do is, is, to, um, is to investigate the inner life, you know, because um, mm -hmm. a lot of the external things are being cut out at the moment. Sh share a little bit about that, about Christian contemplation and meditation. And I think meditation, I think this would be the same in America, but certainly in England, has often been associated with um, sort of new age and um, uh, Eastern mysticism. And not that, you know, that's not a judgment upon those different types of reflection or whatever but but it's not that that you're offering it's a it's a christian meditation is a is a is a different thing talk to us a little bit about what christian meditation is as a i mean lots of other faiths pray for example um right. lots of other faiths meditate but what is what, what's distinctive about christian christian meditation from your perspective well first and foremost like you mentioned earlier it's definitely our focus has to be on the word of god mm -hmm. A Christian meditation is to think about, to ponder, to, um, and so what are we pondering? We, we need to have that focus on the one who created us. We, we want to see ourselves as he sees us. So the way we do that, Christian meditation is looking to God. That's the difference. We have to look to God. Then we look within. As we're in God's presence, he examines us. So um, it starts from that place and it's critical. And as far as I'm concerned, and I hear the Lord telling me that all the time, even when I get anxious about writing another meditation, he prompts and reminds me, remember, it's about me, it's about my word. And so when we take God's word and we meditate upon that, it's, um, that is the starting place of Christian meditation. And it was uncomfortable for me at first as well, because I had never practiced any type of meditation. Um, it becomes natural as we sit in God's presence to be still and know that I am God. He invites us. It's an invitation. He says, come. And as you come to me, you will know me. And so as we sit in that place, it's like, well, what we can ask those questions. What do you want to say to me? Me to know about you. And so scripture is that integral part of that. 
Um, if we want to hear God speak, we have to know his word. That's his starting place. The Bible's the starting place of our conversation with God. I think St. Ambrose says that. Um, so we need to we need to be in his word. We need to know his word. The more we know his word, the more we hear him speak because the scripture comes up and you're like, oh, you're speaking that to me right now, Lord. So that's the, the scripture component is integral. And I find it interesting that Psalms 1, right in the very first book and the first verses of Psalms tells us to meditate on the word of God. Um, and then it tells us all the benefits of that, that will be like a tree flourishing. And so before all those Psalms and ponderings of praises and laments, all of that, it says meditate on this. And so that's, that's Christian meditation. It's really good. And I found that personally so helpful in doing it over the last, you know, and, and you do, you're quite um, in a gentle way, but you're quite firm on that in your, from my perspective, in the reflections. So, you know, there'll be a, a particular theme, a particular thought that, that comes out of a particular scripture. And you'll often guide us back to that or pick up on it in other, other scriptures. So one's feeding one's head and heart with, with truth. Cindy, talk a little bit about, so, so contemplation was quite um, new to me because I'm quite an activist and I'm an extrovert and I, I can't sit still for very long. And, but um, um, uh, how, would, how have you found in, in both doing the podcast, but also in doing your retreats, getting people up and running in, in starting? And that's what I quite like about um, your podcast, Leave Me Wanting More, not leaving me feeling condemned that I'm not very good at being silent, mm -hmm. which I think is quite a gift. You probably take it for granted, but how, did, how have you found in your retreats and things, you know, getting people up and running, particularly who are new to this, or particularly maybe who aren't of a naturally contemplative nature? Right, right. And I just read something recently that's interesting that, um, and even in preparing for, for our conversation, um, that contemplation is actually a gift from God. Wow. The Holy Spirit gives us. We're not just born a contemplative. We might be born an introvert, a person who enjoys more quiet um, or personality types, but contemplation is learned. And I can tell you quite honestly, I love quiet. I can be in my house all day long with no music or nothing on. I relish in quiet space, but that doesn't mean my mind is focusing on God. I have a mind that runs rampant. <laughs> it gets distracted. Wow. I can go in a many different directions. So I can personally say it's training. It really is training and practicing. It's like we practice the presence of God, right? We're always practicing. Um, and so it is a practice and we become better at contemplation the more we sit and do it because God draws us. He says, draw near, draw near to me. I'll draw near to you. And the eyes of the Lord search throughout the earth or range throughout the earth, however that goes, um, searching for those whose hearts are committed. So he's just waiting and watching always waiting for us to say yes to that invitation to be still and know me. It's such a beautiful invitation, like, come, be still, and you can know me. That just started speaking to me, and I'm like, is it that easy? That's what started the 40 days of stillness. I'm like, what if stillness does, you know, lets us know God? What if stillness allows us to receive the healing of being in his presence? There's just so many what ifs. It's just such a huge possibility of being in his presence, and then ultimately um, that he would be exalted. As we come to this present, then I will be exalted. You'll know. You'll know who I am. The priority, there's a shift that happens. Um, and you ask some, oh, but you were on the personality types. My husband's um, type A and extrovert. So it's a harder practice for him to sit still like he wants to have an agenda. I get that um, you kind of need to um, know what it's going to look like, how it's going to, how it's going to end or whatever. But um, I think the in my gatherings, what I notice, I always give space for what is comfortable for you. Yes. So we have women that can come in and just immediately enter into that space and long for it. And they're just craving just alone time and space for maybe little kids or family or whatever. Then you have others that don't know what to do with themselves. And so I, I always recommend do what's comfortable for you. Everyone is, everyone is different. If you need to walk around, um, at a particular time, then do that. There's no right or wrong. We, we have to do that. We have to, God meets us right where we're at. And that's the beautiful thing about coming into a time of, um, of meditation and contemplation is we don't have to 
get everything cleaned up. We don't have to have everything done. We just come as we are and God meets us right there in that place. And so who you are is who God made you to be. That's good. One and of the then things- I quote that I really like that I wanted to share with you because I, I love this quote. This is Andrew Murray. And he says, the spirit filled life is not a special deluxe edition of Christianity. It is part and parcel of the total plan of God for all his people. That's good. And yeah. And so I just love that. It's not like, oh, you're a contemplative. You can relate to this. It's like, no, when we get, when we become still and sit in God's presence, he can fill us. He's always wanting to fill us. I always think of it like a moving target, like a, if you're trying to fill something up that's moving, it's very hard to do. But as we become still, God wants to pour into us and fill us so that then, of course, we can pour back out. That's so really good. That, that we can pour out. One of the things that this lady in our community here shared, who led, us, who led me on this sort of adventure time with Jesus thing, she was saying, um, she said, you know, allow your imagination, use your imagination. And then she said, um, um, you, you know, it, we use our imagination to worry. Mm-hmm. therefore we can also use our imagination what is it i think it's philippians 4 says whatever is noble true right pure excellent praiseworthy think about such things and i found that helpful to allow god in a sense to get on the back of my imagination so often mm-hmm. i would sit there and i'm trying to force hearing from god whereas trying to relax and be a bit more intuitive and go with your first thought um and don't worry that you might be imagining it because that's okay too, because God will okay. use our imagination. So run with that. And, and even if it's just the, a little glimpse of something or the beginnings of an image, you know, sort of go with that and see where that leads. And you seem to imply that similarish sort of relax and listen approach and not trying to force something, but go with whatever comes into your mind, you know, Mm-hmm. I don't know whether you comment on that in any way, you know, how one hears from, you know, hearing from God in, in that. Um. I actually prepared some um, tips that I can share um, with you as well, but I totally agree with that. Um, there's just so much, and that's why it's helpful to read others that have gone before you. I mean, certainly that's how we learn, but grab those tips that are right for you. But one thing is really to relax and to breathe. Hmm. And a lot of people can say, well, breathing, that just all just, again, sounds like Eastern meditation or, you know, yoga or something, but it's not. Our very breath comes from God. It says the breath of the Almighty is in you. The breath of the Almighty gives you life. That's scripture. And so when we just begin with breathing in deeply, number one, breathing in deeply slows down our adrenaline, brings us in a place of rest. It calms anxiety. And so learning to breathe um, slowly and intentionally um, becomes a prayer in itself, I think. I think that just breathing, just here I am, God, I'm just going to breathe and enjoy every breath you give me in your presence. So we start from that place. Then you start paying attention to your body. Okay, what feels tension? I carry a lot of tension in my shoulders. And so how do we begin to relax that? And a great way is to plant your feet on the ground and then to have open, open hands. And I always say open hands represent an open heart. Mm. If we come all clenched or like, I'm doing this, but I, I'm here, you know, under duress. <laughs> I think there's just an open posture that represents an open heart. So it is about relaxing. Find a comfortable place. Prepare the atmosphere. Find a place that's quiet or welcoming to you. A place where if you feel like today's the day, you just want to lay on the ground or curl up somewhere, whatever, that you're just comfortable in that space. I think that's a huge part of... Um, of entering in. And then the, as we become comfortable, um, then our minds are, are more open. We're relaxed. We can relax thinking about things. Another thing I recommend is if you're a to-do person, write your to-do list, lay it down, even lay it before God. Here this is. I'm just going to lay this down here before you before I begin so that I can hear your voice and I'm not um, paying attention to my to-do list. So those are some of the beginning ways that I that I recommend, that I have found really helpful for myself and for others that participate. So good, Cindy. I'm feeling relaxed already. (laughs) Good, good. My my whole body is beginning to like just relax. And then- Because we forget, we forget that we have all this tension here and then we're like, what is that about? And so the other, the neat thing about that is you can even ask in that time, like, what is that about? Why am I feeling all this tension? You just start asking God questions and you find your body 
um, responding because we're a body, soul, mind, and spirit. We're made up of that. God tells us that love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. So when we come, I, I will argue this point <laughs> from experiences. We have to come as a whole person and we have to offer our bodies, the temple of the Holy Spirit, say, here I am, God. And that means slowing down. I mean, there's times where we can, we can enjoy um, that contemplation on a nice slow walk. Um, but there's times where we need to present our whole selves and just say, I'm going to just present my whole self. Because what our, what our bodies do, then our mind begins to engage, right? Um, and so we offer our bodies, our souls, our souls, the essence of, of, of who we are, our mind, our will, our emotions, and then um, our spirits, which connects our hearts, our spirit to spirit connects with God, and then our minds, where all those thoughts come, and Romans tells us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds, and so that happens, so we bring ourselves as a whole person before God, each one affects the others, and what happens, and what I've found, and what I've learned through things I've read is that we most often go through life led by our souls. That's called soulish living. And um, that's our emotions, our wills. We're, we're leading by that. And what happens in a time of meditation and contemplation is we, I, I love the word alignment. We can bring our body, soul, mind, and spirit back into alignment. And that alignment is spirit to spirit. The spirit of God wants to lead our spirit and everything else should be following our spirit. So um, good. So yeah, so realignment happens in that in that place. And so a prayer that um, that I find very powerful that I learned was align me, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in my body, soul, mind, and spirit with you. So to have that that threefold alignment. That's so helpful, Cindy. You're going to kindly lead us at the end of this in a in a time of. Um um meditation reflection contemplation so I'm, I'm looking forward to that but just um just a couple of final things i'd love to hear a little bit about um other types of prayer that you, that, that, that you do as well that sort of complement um contemplation and solitude and meditation that you also have found helpful and then and then it'd be lovely to hear a little bit about how you're finding coronavirus and any reflections mm -hmm. on that and any things you sort of sense god has been doing in your life through that or speaking to us as the you know the body of christ um yeah but but firstly sort of other 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 spiritual disciplines that you find helpful or have found helpful and, and other types of prayer as well um i just think that the spiritual disciplines are our offering to god so to continue to learn and to grow in those to to research them and understand what they are and what they look like and why they've been practiced throughout Christianity is just so important for us. Um, I know that was never part of my life. I learned that way later. But for me, I, I love a variety of um, prayer. I'm kind of a spontaneous person and I, I don't, I'm not rigid. I don't stick to things. I love a variety. I love to prayer walk. Um, I learned my, um, with, a, with a dear group of friends in California, we became prayer walkers and just stormed our community and our church for for God, just like, and I just learned so much, but I love that. I, so I love engaging the body in prayer. There's just so many creative ways. Um, I find the most powerful prayers are praying scripture. Mm. So I love to take um, a passage of scripture or um, a, just a verse and, and pray that. But those are our most powerful prayers because we're praying the word of God. And when you and when you when you say praying a scripture for someone who for someone who would have no experience of that, what, what does that mean to pray a scripture? It's literally to open your Bible and find something that resonates with you and then saying, I want that. This is what you say, God, I want this. So you can personalize it um, as you're praying it or you can pray it right as it is. The Bible has beautiful prayers just written out in Ephesians and Colossians and, of course, the Psalms. Um, in the meditation, I'll close with it. I'll have, a, um, I think it's the Ephesians a three prayer. It'll pray over you and it'll be an example of what that looks like. But it's just um, even a, a word. One of the things I find helpful in the practice, um, just to go back a little bit, because it's something um, that I always recommend in meditation is having a breath prayer. Um, is that something that you talk about or, or teach? Mm -hmm. No, but but uh, um, unpack that. I know what you mean, but un unpack that. So um, the 
uh, throughout Christianity, the history of the church, the breath, what um, is considered a breath prayer was the, um, the Jesus prayer, Lord Jesus Christ have mercy, which many churches pray and recite. And it's really a beautiful prayer, but I didn't grow up knowing that or understanding that. But what it is is a centering prayer. It brings us to a place of focus. And so a breath prayer is a prayer, um, is a way of praying without ceasing. So you talk about a variety of prayers. I use breath prayer a lot to fight anxiety. I have a scripture or a verse or a come Lord Jesus come. If I wake up at night and I feel anxious, I use a breath prayer. So a breath prayer is short, five to eight syllables long. And it's your name for God, whatever name is familiar, most familiar to you or whatever name resonates in that moment whether it's Father, Lord Jesus, Shepherd, and you pair that with your current need or desire, um, help me, and it can be that, help me, Lord Jesus, whatever that is, you pair it together, that becomes your breath prayer that you literally pray with the rhythm of your breathing and in a slower manner to allow yourself to um, just breathe in, God, exhale, breathe, exhale, the word of God. And so breath prayers help keep you focused if you're in a time of meditation and find your um, mind wandering, it brings you back. Um, one that I use all the time is be still my soul, be still. Mm. I find all of a sudden my lists are going or thinking about someone else then. But so breath prayer brings you back to that place. Um, I think breath prayers are powerful. And I've, um, again, that's something that I learned in the, the last decade. I wish I'd known my whole life because I feel like it really brings us into with just a word or two into that's, God's presence. That's so good, Cindy. I, I echo that at, at night. I do that when I wake up in the middle of the night. Some okay, sort yeah. Of is so helpful. Um, so uh, how, uh, moving on now, do, sort of fine, final, final question to do with um, how you're finding coronavirus and what it's like over there in your community and um, mm. uh, sort of connected with, you know, how your faith sort of intersects with that. Um, have you got any thoughts on what you think God is doing through this, either for you personally or for the church or for the world? Sorry, it's quite an open-ended question there, but just how you're doing at this time. Yeah. yeah. I look, had written a couple of things, so I would kind of remember what, um, I just, I, I find number one, um, I, God's just reminding me, I, again, I kind of shared the story of the podcast and I felt like the Lord was reminding me this is a be still and know that I am God time. We are such a busy people. We rush, we, um, we take so little time to be still. And um, I'm reminded of Psalms 23 and different versions. He leads me beside still water. Some versions say he makes me lie down. Um, sometimes we're made to, be, to stop. Um, and we have to be forced to stop. And I, I'm seeing this as that time that this is a, be still and know that I'm God time. What might God want to be saying to each one of us personally right now in the midst of this? Um, he's asking for our time and attention. Come, come to me, come to me as your source. All of our, all of those things in the world that are distracting us and have always distracted us, the idols um, uh, are now, there's not much out there that we can do or run to. And so what will that look like for us personally? I feel like it's an invitation for God to prepare us for the next he has for us. He always has new things for us. His mercies are new every morning. So what is he preparing us for in this time? It's a great time to sit and ask, what do you want to say to me, God? What are you preparing me for? Um, there's, there's just so much. It's, it's definitely a be still and listen time. However, even in the midst of all this time, we can fill this time with a lot of other things. Yeah. Besides, you know, really God's word. Um, I think it's a challenge to be in his word and to know him, to know him more and um, his will and his plans for us and, and all of that. And I think it's a time, I, again, I love the word alignment. I think it's a realigning. It's a realigning of, um, of who we are, who the body of Christ is. Um, that's what I see. I know, I love hearing what people think and are feeling. We just want to ask that question. What are you sensing right now? What is God saying? So, yeah. I think but it's a time of rest and, and reevaluating priorities. Yeah. I mean, for us in the UK, one of the things, obviously, we can't meet in our church buildings, which, you know, mm -hmm. is very sad. You know, as you were saying before, we are um, part of our, our faith is a physical faith. You know, our, Jesus was raised physically. There is something about 
we, we have an embodied faith, you know, so there is something about connecting with people physically and, um, you know, for a hug and a holding a hand and shaking people's hands, you know, that, that's what it is to be human, you know, our, our, yeah, so um, hard. Um, but, but the positive, one of the, one of the positives is that it means that faith is really getting in people's homes, which maybe in the UK it hasn't been so much, whereas it really is. It's either falling away or people are getting faith in their homes and in their lives, you know, and it's not just up the road in the church. It's now. Right. Um, so are you seeing an increase in your church of um, people listening online uh, or your community? I don't know whether we're getting an increase, but I, but we are having people connecting. And I think, mm -hmm. and I think it has to be even more of a real choice then. And also I love the picture of, you know, families singing together in their homes, individuals, singing in their homes and praying in their homes and in a sense that sense of the holy spirit lingering in people's homes rather than you do church up the road and then you get on with the rest of your day and you go home when the when the podcast finish or whatever it is when the when the when the when the service finishes online you're still there you're in the same place that you were and i think that's a special thing um anyway cindy um why don't you lead us in in a little meditation now if that's okay and, oh, okay. um, unless there's anything else you want to add now, or there might be at the end of the meditation. Um, yeah, I don't, if there's something else that you, yeah, if you think of, I'll be happy to, I'll pull up, um, just one that actually was the, the last one on the podcast for season two. Um, and just a little background on that. I just, it was really mindful to me and I know many others as we face, as we approached a new decade, like this is significant. It's 2020 what might God be saying to us? How is this a year of spiritual eyes being open? I, I had sensed that all through 2019, like this is, I feel like this is epic. And then things turned into this pandemic where you're like, wow, that wasn't what I was expecting. But I'm just mindful um, in my own life. And most people would say, we never know God or see him as plain as when we walk through the pathway of pain and difficult things, this desperation, a longing for more of God because we're desperate for him. We're desperate for answers. We're desperate, desperate for refuge. And um, Psalms 4610, be still and know, is the chapter on um, God is our refuge. So that's in the context of coming to me and um, as our refuge. So um, this particular meditation is just really focusing on what, how might God really want to open our eyes to see him more clearly than ever. Um, so normally we would have some music behind there to just kind of distract. This will be a little bit quiet, but um, I'd be happy to, to lead you through that. And, and as you prepare yourself, given those, so um, those two tips, <laughs> relax, open palms, eyes closed, and, um, and just begin to breathe. Breathe in slowly, deep breaths. When you inhale through your mouth and exhale through your nose, and be reminded each breath is a gift, a gift from God. Just continue breathing, notice any tension in your body and begin to relax all of your muscles. listens to God's invitation, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in all the earth. When all else is stripped away, when we become quiet, God is always there waiting for us with unconditional love and eternal hope. So listen to Ephesians 1.18. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. 
the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. So in these moments, just take a moment to breathe in deeply and ask the Lord to open the eyes of your heart. To see God, something more than our natural eyes must be opened. The eyes of our hearts must be opened to the holy and miraculous presence of God with us. It is in this inner sanctuary of our being that the Holy One resides. So listen to this prayer. Paul's prayer for spiritual wisdom for all believers in Ephesians 1. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you and the riches of his glorious inheritance and incomparably great power for us who believe. God's incomparable great power is always available to help you. There's nothing too difficult for the creator of heaven and earth and absolutely nothing can separate you from his great love. So take a moment and present all your fears and concerns to the one who holds the whole world in his hands. Luke 24, 31 tells us their eyes were opened and they recognized Jesus. May your eyes be opened to recognize Jesus in the daily of life. Amen. Amazing, Cindy. I always feel when you do your reflections that I'm just sort of getting going. <laughs> I know we want, and, and the whole thing is, is, is to resist the urge to rush, yeah. to give time and space. But even in five minutes, I find it's amazing how, I'm, goodness, a minute in God's presence, right? In, this, <laughs> in the presence of the creator of the universe changes us. Even five minutes, we just feel... Like, wow, I feel God's peace. And, and how do we hear the voice of God? Most often it's through the word of God, but it is a dialogue that you become familiar with in your head as you start having conversations um, with God in the stillness. It's lovely, um, Cindy. And, and also I found over the time being able to um, get into that place of stillness and silence quicker. Um, yes. Uh, yes. Some, some, some mornings not. Sometimes I actually have to do a couple of your meditations like back to back just to, <laughs> just to calm, quiet me down. But, but otherwise, <laughs> normally it's, you know, you, you, you can a little bit. I'm a, I'm a runner. I do a lot of running and I could go for a run now because you're just so used to it because your body's just used to it. So you can just stick on yeah. some running shoes, out you go. Again, sometimes it's harder than other times, but once you develop a, a rhythm and a practice and a discipline, it becomes, it does become easier. And then you can go on to the next sort of, it's not a level, but you, you can deepen that and you can widen that. Um, right. Cindy, I that recommend was... setting a, a stillness timer is what I call it, because you can be looking at your watch. If you have a certain amount of time, set your, set your timer for 10 minutes, start with little small doses 
Um, and then you can increase, like you said, you find your longing for more. And that's what I found. I felt like, oh, I, I need more time and more time and just lingering in God's presence. And then the um, temptation is to think, oh, I'm wasting time. But it's, it really is the most important time. Um, I found, I, found day. That I love the silence that we had then, but I've also found on your podcast, the music actually very helpful as well. It hasn't been, um, it doesn't draw attention to itself. Um, but it, it creates a lovely environment in which to relax and be at peace. And, and that's been helpful too. Um, and then your timing, you know, you'll come in and, and um, so that's been so helpful. It's kind of a launching ground just, you know, to, to get you started. And because we want everyone to hear the voice of God. We want everyone to know their value as they sit in, yeah. in God's presence and know they're a beloved child and um, with a rich inheritance and God wants to, impart that in all of us really good cindy this has been such a joy such a privilege to meet you and uh you're a sort of christian hero of mine um <laughs> so, so it's so helpful it's such a blessing and and thank you um i thank god for you and um what he's done in my life through through you which is such a blessing and i know for many other people's lives and hopefully on the back of this that other people will you know c connect with this i know in our congregation some people already have so that's that's great and it's just a lovely, it's great to have these different tools that can help us on that um, journey and mm -hmm. spiritual guides like you who can help us on that journey. And, and all of us have the privilege of being a sort of spiritual guide in a sense, pointing right. people mm -hmm. along paths that we might have found a blessing in our own lives. Okay. The, the, the final question I want to end with is when's season three coming out? I know this isn't Netflix, but this is spiritual Netflix. <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Really, it was my honor and it's so nice to meet you. But um, thank you for the encouragement because we'll get finished the season. We'll go, ah, okay. Now we're going to relax. Um, and, and then we'll, uh, I'll start getting a little prompting and I'll know, okay, I know it's time again. Get back, get back in there, start writing and recording. Um, it's a family team, so it works well. My husband's in the podcast room. My daughter um, shared a little of her story and my son-in-law did that great background music and so um I don't know the exact date for an answer but we do have I will share that we're working on longer meditations that we're putting um on iTunes we will have this week on iTunes one on fear and anxiety and also the meditation music will be available in the track just by itself wow season three will probably be they um hopefully by summer so good Cindy <laughs> wow Cindy, this has been such a blessing. Thank you so, so much.